important to highlight that the international support to Israel is seemingly unprecedented, with a marathon of foreign dignitaries visiting the Jewish state, including just today EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, as well as the foreign ministers of Italy, Canada and Germany. The latter top diplomat, namely Foreign Minister Annalena Bayerbock, has been a voice of support for the Jewish state, joining Chancellor Schulz and Defense Minister Pistorius, as well as President Frank Walter Steinmeier, who has been unequivocal in Israel's right for self-defense. I repeatedly spoke to Israeli President Herzog in recent days. The horror, but also the determination in his words, is equally big. What possibility does Israel have other than to fight the terrorists with military might in this hour of danger and to destroy their arms, depots and structures? It is important to highlight that Berlin has officially banned rallies of support for Hamas, similar to Hungary and Poland, among others. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin also visited Israel today, during which he held separate meetings with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yav Gallant, among others. The USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group is now in the region led by the largest aircraft carrier in the world. We've augmented U.S. fighter aircraft squadrons in the Middle East, and the U.S. Department of Defense stands fully ready to deploy additional assets if necessary. We will remain in close contact with our valued partners across the region, and security assistance from the Department of Defense is already rapidly flowing into Israel. That includes munitions and air defense capabilities and other equipment and resources. The unequivocal support by the United States is seemingly unprecedented, with U.S. President Joe Biden repeatedly cautioning additional countries and terror groups from entering the war against Israel, with chief focus on the Islamic Republic of Iran and its proxies as regional tensions continue to mount. We're surging additional military assistance to the Israeli Defense Force, including ammunition, interceptors to replenish the Iron Dome, and we've moved the U.S. carrier fleet to the eastern Mediterranean, and we're sending more fighter jets there in that region, and made it clear, made it clear to the Iranians, be careful. It's important to know that yesterday afternoon, unidentified aircraft struck the airports of both Damascus and Aleppo, rendering both airfields incapacitated. The strikes occurred while Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian made his way to the region, ultimately landing in Beirut, where he was welcomed by members of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Hamas, and the Iranian proxy Hezbollah. Before this meeting, I had the chance to meet separately with Prime Minister Najib Mikadi and also Syed Hassan Nasrallah, the Secretary General of Hezbollah. <laughs> Following the meeting with Tehran's top diplomat, Hezbollah's Deputy Chief Naim Qasim relayed a message from his masters in both the Islamic Republic as well as in an undisclosed bunker in Lebanon. <laughs> We are following moment by moment. The behind-the-scenes calls with us by great powers, Arab countries, envoys of the United Nations, directly and indirectly asking us not to interfere in the battle will have no effect. And every time we ask them, why do you not stop the war, they tell us, do not intervene in the battle. We as Hezbollah contribute to the confrontation and will contribute to it within our vision and our plan. We follow the moves of the enemy and we are fully ready. When the time comes for any action, we will carry it out.